The Lord gave me this message the other day, and, and I thought it was going to go in a whole other direction. You know how that goes, right? You say, okay, Lord, well, you're going to do this. That's great, wonderful. And all of a sudden, he takes it off in a whole other direction, and that's fine. But I, I always want to second-guess my ability to hear him. Because I want to make sure I'm doing what he wants rather than what I want. And coming up with his plan rather than my own plan. Amen? Amen. And praise God, he always verifies. He always says what he's doing. But here's a... a I don't bet you haven't heard a message title like this before. Does the devil know your name? <laughs> Does the enemy know your name? Amen? Wow. Uh, yeah, if you're a believer... He knows your name, praise God, and uh, and sometimes I wish he'd forget it, right? But we go to, to Acts chapter 19, verse 11 says, Now God worked unusual miracles by the hands of Paul. Unusual miracles by the hands of Paul. I can't imagine. When the, when the word says he just worked miracles, that'd be amazing now, wouldn't it? But he says he worked unusual miracles. He must have been doing some wild stuff, you know? I mean, it records a, a number of different things that he did in there that was pretty incredible. But, uh, but for the word to sp so specifically say he worked unusual miracles through him, it had to be something really to write home about, right? So that even handkerchiefs or aprons were brought from his body to the sick and diseases left them and evil spirits went out of them. You know, we've done that before, and we've done it on a number of different occasions. We'll pray over someone that can't get out of bed, or, or they're in an, another place or something like that. We'll pray over a handkerchief or anything, uh, anoint it with oil, and send it to them, and, and believe. Stand with the Word of God. The Word of God says that this will work uh, on occasion. So we're seeing that still happening today, but it, that's power, uh, carrying the power of God. Amen? Where you can take something that's just been on someone and go and, and lay it on someone. We did that for Cindy one time last year sometime, I believe. And uh, brought a, a prayer cloth to her. Yes, and anointed her with it. And within a day or so, she was up out of bed. So praise God. We see what God does. But it also says an evil spirits went out of them. Evil spirits went out of them. Hmm. I mean, there are evil spirits. They're, back then, they had evil, evil spirits. That's what I'm saying, right? Back then, they had evil spirits. Is that anything still going on today? Yes, sir. There is. In this world, oh my goodness. Wow. Yeah. There are still evil spirits. The enemy has not left this earth yet. This is his kingdom right now, unfortunately. That's how he could carry Jesus before uh, the whole world, showing the whole world, and says, all the nations are mine. I'll give them to you if you just worship me. And Jesus said, no, I'll pass. Thanks for the offer, bud, but I'll pass. I'll do what my father says anyway, right? Mm -hmm. But by just bringing a prayer cloth to people that were suffering, evil spirits would leave them. Mm -hmm. Have you ever been oppressed? Mm -hmm. I have. I've been oppressed as a believer more times than I ever want to count where the enemy just comes in like a flood and just comes and pounces all over you and beats you half to death and you're wondering what in the world's going on. Uh, recently, as a matter of fact, our, uh, we've had a refrigerator go out. Not cheap to replace. Right? Just last week, we had to replace our refrigerator. I've blown out three tires on a car that's got 45,000 miles on it. Three tires running over nails, blowing out things. All kinds of different things. Our dishwasher went out six months ago. Our microwave went out about seven or eight months ago. One thing after another. Now I know these things are getting older, our appliances and everything. We've been in that house 17 years, and uh, the guy that came to repair the refrigerator said he was amazed we got 17 years out of it because they don't last that long anymore. And I thought, wow, really? Uh, when I was a kid, you kept the same one yeah, for 30, 30 years or so, you know, years. Yeah, 30 or 40 years. But yeah. nowadays, they don't make them like that. He said, don't expect to get that out of the new one. I'm going, really? You know, wow. Planned obsolescence. 
But the enemy loves to attack. He comes and pounces on us and beats us up. Sometimes it's something that we've opened the door for, right? You ever done that? Yeah. We have. Yeah, nod your head like that. Yeah, we've done that. We've opened the door. I'll tell you what. If you have little ones, little ones like these guys, and you allow them to watch something or you watch something in your home that is evil, vile, against the Lord God Almighty, those little ones won't sleep that night. Guaranteed. You'll find out about, well, just before they get to sleep good or at 2 o'clock in the morning or any time during the night, they'll be waking up screaming. Power. And the enemy, you have opened the door and allowed the enemy to come into your house. And you wonder, well, why do the kids have all these nightmares? Uh, duh. Uh, you know, hello. We need to be careful of what we do because there are evil spirits then, there, here on this earth, here in, the, in this day and time. So, verse 13 says, So then some of the itinerant Jewish exorcists took it upon themselves to call the name of the Lord Jesus over those who had evil spirits, saying, We exercise you by the Jesus whom Paul preaches. Hmm. You ever thought, I, I had to tell so many different people that, well, uh, when did you get saved? Well, you know, my parents were saved, and my grandparents were saved, and my grandfather was a preacher, and this and that and everything else, but they can't tell you when they got saved. And you go, okay, well, but how about you? Well, I've been in church all my life, so they think it's just an automatically assumed thing. And see, here they are right here saying, we exercise you by the Paul, by Jesus, whom they don't know, whom Paul preaches, trying to get a third hand review, review of this. And we do this sometimes when we come up with our own thing, when we're coming up uh, talking about our parents and Jesus' name, the Jesus that my mother believes in, I come against you. It won't work, right? Amen. It does not work. We have to have that personal relationship yes, with Him. Just like I was saying a minute ago that I used to live a, a very, very vile life. Very vile life. And I got tired of it. I got to hurting in my heart. And I didn't know what to do. I had no idea how to come to the Lord. And I just started crying out. And I said, Lord God, help me. Where else can I go? And I literally, at one point, fell on my face in, in the carpet and sort of said, Lord, where else can I go? I, I have no way of overcoming this because I had had an oppression of an evil spirit in my life. Before I got saved, before I got saved, I had an evil spirit that was really giving me fits. And I knew I had no place else to go. And I knew I had no business coming before a holy God. I didn't come and say, well, Lord, you know, my mother believes in you, so tell this thing to get lost. No, I knew I had no business coming before a holy God. But these guys were thinking, well, hey, Paul preaches him, so we'll just do it. It's in the name. It's in the name of Jesus, right? Well, so as long as we use that name like a coined phrase, have we ever heard people do that? Just tack in Jesus' name on the end of any prayer and expect that to work. Well, we need to be speaking in the authority and power of Jesus because he lives within us. If we don't have him living within us, we have no business using his name. How can we do that? Just like the policeman says, stop in the name of the law because he's been given the authority right. of the law, right? That's right? We need to make sure that we are walking in his authority because we are under his authority. We have made him our Lord and no one else. Not me. Not that I'm my own Lord or anyone else or not my church's Lord. I come against you in the name of, the, of Jesus whom my church preaches. Ain't going to happen. My denomination or anything else like that is not going to save me. It's not going to help me when I need help. And they need a personal relationship with the Lord Jesus. And what happened? Well, also, there were seven sons of Sceva, a Jewish chief priest. Sound like what we're just talking about? A Jewish chief priest. Here, well, my dad knows you, knows the Lord, and then so we're going to go on that. So they also said, well, we'll go on off and do the same thing. Our dad's a chief priest. My dad's a pastor. 
Well, I tell you what, it is tough on PKs is what we call them, preacher's kids. I'll tell you, it's, it's tough. And it's hard to keep them going a lot of times because they get so much flack from the sheep. They get beat up by the sheep. If they do anything that doesn't resemble absolute perfection, they get hammered sometimes. But this was seven sons of Sceva, who was a, G, a chief priest in the Jewish religion. And the evil spirit answered and said, Jesus I know, and Paul I know. But who are you? Jesus they knew, because they had encountered Jesus, amen? Didn't they not encounter, encounter Jesus on more than one occasion? Yeah. And they had encountered Paul, because they knew Paul was under the authority of Jesus as well. But who are you? They, they knew, those evil spirits knew that that person did not know, those seven guys in this instance, did not know the Lord themselves. And they had no authority over them because they were not under the authority of Jesus. We need to make sure that we are walking in Him. We put on Jesus. Amen? Seems like I read that somewhere. That in the Bible. That's where it was. I knew. In the Bible. Put on Jesus. Amen. We invite him in. He says, oh, Behold, I stand at the door and knock in Revelation. He says, I stand at the door and knock. And anyone that opens the door, I'll come into them. Come into and Make my living. I'll make my home there. I'll come into them and sup with them. Have a meal with them. And we need to open up and say, Lord, come. And now I have made him my Lord. He is now my boss. He is the one that tells me what to do. And now I am under his authority. So now I can go and he has given me authority over all the power of the enemy. Which we will see here shortly. But we need to see if we attack the enemy, which is going to attack us. Going to attack us. If you're a believer... If you're a non-believer, he's still going to attack you, but he's going to kind of leave you alone because he's, you're already in his court, right? Mm -hmm. But we better make sure that if we come against all the, the attacks that the enemy comes against us, we need to make sure that he knows that we are under the authority of Jesus Christ. Amen? amen. amen. There we go. I like that. Y'all know when to say amen and everything. Of course, I told you. Mark 3.11 says, talking about how they knew Jesus, right? It says, and the unclean spirits, whenever they saw him, Jesus, fell down before him and cried out, you are the Son of God. They fell down before him and said, you are the Son of God. What's the word say? Uh, that every knee shall bow, every tongue shall confess that Jesus is the Lord, right? That Jesus is Lord. As soon as they came physically in contact with him, they had no other choice. They had no choice. They don't, they don't get the option of saying, well, I don't know, I, you know, maybe I'll say something. No. They had to fall down before him because they recognized his authority and his power over them. Amen. That's what I like walking in. I need to walk in that same authority. I'll tell you, many times... I've been in situations in churches where there have been people that have been troubled by evil spirits walk in. And from across the room, you'll make eye contact. And you know, and they know what's going on. They need to know that the power of God lives in us because we are under the authority of Jesus Christ. Luke 4.41 says, And demons also came out of many, crying out and saying, You are the Christ, the Son of God. And he, rebuking them, did not allow them to speak, for they knew that he was the Christ. Now, I like the way it says this. See, Jesus didn't just go, well, you know. He said, no, I rebuke you. Don't you speak. That's, that's having authority over someone, right? Where they won't be able to speak. Where he goes and says, in, Je in, in Jesus' name, he just said, stop, you don't speak any longer. He had that much authority and power over them to where he could speak and tell them what to do and when to do it. Amen? Amen. Our God is God. <clears throat> Mark 5, 7 says, 
And he cried out with a loud voice and says, What have I to do with you, Jesus, Son of the Most High God? This is a, a demon speaking. I implore you by God that you not do not torment me. Please don't hurt me. Because they knew that he had the power and the authority to torment them. To beat them up bloody. And they begged him not to, kill, to torment them. Amen? Amen? That's having authority. That's having power. That they recognized immediately the power and authority that Jesus had. Begged him, please don't, don't hurt me. <clears throat> now, this is actually uh, from the, the time where he went across the sea into the Gadarenes, right? And this is the Gadarene maniac that they were running into, the, the demoniac. Uh, that it was speaking to Jesus here. And he also begged him earnestly that he would not send him out of the country. See, they got authority. Jesus has authority to tell them anything to do, whatever it is. You will go out of the country if I tell you to go out of the country. You'll shut your mouth if I tell you to shut your mouth. You will do whatever I say you will do. And he had complete authority over them. So they begged him earnestly that he would not send them out of the country. Mark 9, 25 says, And he rebuked the unclean spirit, saying it to it, A deaf and dumb spirit, I command you, come out of him and enter him no more. Deaf and dumb spirit. Hmm. So are you telling me that, that some of these things, afflictions that we have, physical afflictions, can be demonic related? Yes. Yeah. That's what the Word's telling us anyway. And he rebuked that thing, and the man spoke. Amen? Mm -hmm. What happened when, the, when he was talking with the guys, uh, the guy at the gatherings, right? Mm -hmm. And told them that they begged him to let him go into the pigs, which was an appropriate place for a demon, you know. You know, that was the first place we had a, a biblical record of canned ham. Mm -hmm. you know, or, I mean, uh, uh, devil ham, devil ham, there you go. Devil yeah. ham, right there. First time in the Word of God. But he told them, okay, I'll let you go into the pigs. So you can make some devil ham right off the bat. So, And they ran off into the, uh, off the cliff into the water, right? Kill all the pigs. But whatever he told them to do, they had to do. And here that he runs into one that is causing the person that is being afflicted by this demon to not be able to speak and not be able to hear. You know, one of the, uh, I mean, uh, Sister Beryl, which I've told you about many times, from Sri Lanka, she said when she was under the strong anointing of the Holy Spirit, prayed up and fasted up and, and walking in the Spirit of God, she could walk into a, uh, a hospital and say, this one's a demon case, that's a physical case. That one's a demon case, that one's a physical case. And tell you exactly what's going on. Same with a psychiatric hospital. Many, many, many times there are people that are in psychiatric hospitals that, uh, that have, you've got a lot of them that have physical issues where their brain is not producing a certain chemical that causes their brain not to function properly, right? Uh, and that's right, that's a physical thing and a lot of times that happens. But many, many times they get misdiagnosed with something like that and the problem is, is they have an evil spirit that's giving them grief. Amen? Amen. I was one of those. Before I got saved, I thought I, I almost went to a psychiatrist. And if I would have done that, they would have labeled me as a uh, paranoid schizophrenic, and I would have been in a mental institution. Mm -hmm. And I would have stayed there probably for the rest of my life if no one would have come along and told me what was really going on. But God Almighty delivered me because I knew I had no place coming before him. But I fell on my face and said, Lord, you've got to help me. Because i got no power, no authority over this thing. Help me, Lord God. And he did. And then when I gave my life to him, he did that out of, out of grace, out of mercy for me. He did that because he loved me. And he knew that I would give my life to him. And I did. But Lord God, now once I got that authority from Him that I live and He lives in me and I in Him, oh man, I know who I am in Him. But sometimes we will run into things that are problems where in the spirit realm 
that is causing a physical issue in someone's body. Well, as a matter of fact, uh, Paul says, I have a, a thorn in the flesh, a demon that's come to harass him physically. And it sounds like it could be in his eyes because he told the, the Galatians, was it, or someone that, that I know you should even pluck your own eyes out and give me your eyes if you could, right? And he was saying that right at the same time that he was saying that. And God, he said, Lord, deliver me from this. And, but Jesus says, God told him, no, my, my, uh, oh boy. Yeah, my grace is sufficient for you because it works better when you are weaker. I need to be weak so he is strong. I can't take any credit for it because God Almighty is the only one that can get the credit for it. But sometimes we need to recognize when we're praying over someone that is sick, sometimes it's an enemy over there pinching the heck out of their knee or their leg or whatever it is. Talking about pulling your leg? Well, sometimes they pull your leg. Right? I don't want to have one pull my leg. Funny. <laughs> That's bad. Sorry about that. <laughs> Mark 16, 17, and says, And these signs will follow those who believe. In my name, they will cast out demons. They will speak with new tongues. Who is he talking about? Us. Usins. If my people, which are called by my name. Right? Mm -hmm. Though these signs will follow those who believe. In my name, they will cast out demons. We have the authority and the power yes, over all the power of the enemy. Amen. And sometimes we need to search ourselves. We had to ask, Lord, what is going on with all our stuff breaking constantly and having this little thing and that little thing happen and, and one big thing and another big thing happen over and over again. He supplies the needs, but why is this happening, Lord? Have I opened the door? Have I opened the door? If I have, then I need to make sure that I'm closing that door. I need to go before the Lord and repent for something that I have done. Lord, I'm sorry. Take this away. And then I'm not leaving the door open for the enemy. And then I can say, get out of here in Jesus' name. I don't want anything you've got. You don't have the right to touch me. I have the authority amen. over yes, them. Yes, sir. Amen? Yes, amen. Well, look at this. Luke 10, 17 says, And then the 70 returned with joy, saying, Lord, even the demons are subject to, subject to us in your name. Now, I'll tell you what. A lot of people have tried to say that all this stuff is gone with the disciples. That when the 12 died, all that's gone. And the Holy Ghost and all that stuff, all the, the miracles and all that stuff died away. Here were the 70. This wasn't the 12. This wasn't the, the elite of the group. Wasn't his own special little group that he had gotten together. Now he sent out 70 people. And they returned with joy saying, even the demons are subject to us in your name. Amen. And they went on and they did miracles. They spoke over people and they were healed. Hmm. Wow. So that means we might be able to do the same thing, you think? Yes, sir. You think we can? Yes, sir. I think we can. Because he says it. The word says it. We have the authority over this, and we need to start getting it in our head who we're fighting. Amen? Amen. We're not fighting each other. We're not fighting all this kind of things like that. And Jesus says, and he said to them, I saw faith, Satan fall like lightning from heaven. His authority has been taken away. Satan's authority has been taken away. But look at this. Behold, I give you the authority. I give you the authority to trample on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing by any means shall hurt you. Is Jesus a liar? No. Shake your head like you. No. Oh, there you go. Good. Do that now. Raise your hands now. But hey, he has given us the authority. And we need to start walking in that authority. If we know him and if we have made him the Lord of our life, when we see him attack, and he will, he will attack, no matter what, we have to every night, every solitary night, Lord God, put your hedge of protection around us, Lord God, forgive us 
We used to go through and every solitary night, Lord, show me if I've done anything wrong. Yes. Because if I've opened the door, they've got a legal right to touch me. They've got a legal right to touch me. But I don't want to leave that door open at all. Amen? I want Amen. to be able to stand before the Lord God Almighty and say, I haven't opened any door. But sometimes these things are like little lost puppy dogs following you home. Mm -hmm. You go in contact with someone. I tell you, I've, I've talked to so many people. I had a lady one time that uh, called me up and says, Brother, I, I've been really attacked with this desire to go into a bar and get drunk. And I said, wow, uh, where were you today? Well, I was at a tattoo convention. Oh, my. And I thought, hmm, let me stop and think about this for a minute, you know. So you're around a bunch of people that like to drink and go to bars and all this kind of stuff, and now all of a sudden you're being tempted with this stuff. Do you think there might be a connection there, you know? <clears throat> Just like going into a bar. Well, I'm going there to share the word. Really? How many people have gotten saved since you've been doing that? None. But I'm still going. Right. Let's, we'll go with that one. I don't think that's the case. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> but he has given us the power <clears throat> over to trample scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. <clears throat> and in Jesus' name, he will lose my voice right now. Yes. You see how fast that happened? Mm -hmm. Isn't that interesting? Things that make you go, hmm. Things that make you go, hmm. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> well, in Jesus' name, my voice is fine. Yes, you will lose my Jesus. voice yes. and turn it loose, and I will finish this yes. message to the power of God most high. Amen? Amen. Amen. Yes. See how fast that works? Hallelujah. Wow. How does that happen? Oh, it's gone. I didn't plan all that. <laughs> How could I plan that? They couldn't plan that. I can't do that to my voice. But praise God, God Almighty's word works. Amen? Amen. I want to be able to recognize him when he is attacking. Amen. Just in something as simple as that. Just as something as simple as that. How could that happen? Just, just bang. Well, I could barely speak there for a minute. And all of a sudden, wait a minute. Get out of here. You're not going to touch my voice. I'm going to finish this thing out. And it works. Amen? Amen? The Word of God works. Period. End of story. Man. But look at this. Verse 20. Nevertheless, do not rejoice in this, that the spirits are subject to you, but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. Yes, I'm glad that I've got the authority over all the power of the enemy. Amen? But we're not to rejoice in that. That is not to be our focus. Our focus should be on giving Him glory and honor and praise. Amen. That He has given me salvation. Amen? Yes. Amen? It's not that I'm going out looking all over the place for what the enemy is doing. But I'm going to praise Him and give Him glory and honor. I'm going to have my eyes open, watching. And when something happens, the first thing should be, what have I done? What is going on now? I'm preaching the word of God and the enemy did not want that to go forth, right? And all of a sudden he tried to stop that or make it to where it was a distraction to you to where you were wondering, boy, can he keep speaking? Or boy, I'm wondering what's going on. Oh my goodness. And had you focusing on something other than the words. Right? Praise God Almighty. But we need to rejoice that he has given us everlasting life. Amen. Not that we got the power over them. Ephesians 6.10 says, finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. I like to remember that. You know, he says he writes these things on our heart. We need to remember that, that we are strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Amen. I'm not doing this on my own. I'm not doing this on my own at all. I'm standing in the power of God most high because he lives in me. I am covered in His blood. I am filled by His Spirit. I am washed in His blood. And He has taken away my sin, which takes away the enemy's right to touch me. Right? The enemy has a right to touch you if you are not covered by the blood of Jesus. But He cannot touch you if you are 
covered in his blood and you are surrendered to him and making him your Lord and saying, Lord, I'll do whatever you say, even if it doesn't make sense to me. Boy, so many people draw the line at certain things. Well, that doesn't make sense to me. That's just stupid there. I ain't going to do that. I was just talking with, with Sonny a little while ago before church, and he was saying that he had a, a friend of his that uh, used to be a, a certain denomination, and he says, well, I'll tell you what, I, I, of the Ten Commandments, I like seven of them. I only believe in seven of them. I believe in seven of the Ten Commandments. The other three, those, those are gone, but the, the seven, I really like those. Those are really good. Didn't ask him, you know, what ones they were. Didn't matter, did it? If you like nine of them and you don't like one, you've lost. You've got to keep them all, right? We can't pick and choose what parts of this we want and what parts we don't. This is a part that gives us power and authority. I want to walk in that power and authority. I don't have to sit there and wonder, oh, Lord, what's going to happen next? Oh, Lord, the enemy's just beating me to death and I can't do anything about it. No. Get your hands off my body. Amen. Get your hands off my finances. Get your hands off my family. Yes. Get your hands off my job and out of my relationship with my children. Off my relationships at work. Get your hands off of them in Jesus' name. You will not bind me up with all this. Amen. I'm going to stand in this, and I'm going to stand strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. Yes. Power of His might. Yes. We need to be knowing who we are in Him. Yes. I know who I am in Him. In Him. I know who I am without Him. Been there, didn't like Him much. That's why I got tired of it, and I said, Lord, I got to... To give you the reins because I can't live this thing on my own. I keep messing it up. Uh, verse 11 says, Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. The devil. That's what I know yes. someone like that. Yeah. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand. You can stand against the wiles of the enemy. Yes. We can stand. You can stand against anything and everything that he brings. Doesn't matter. The whole armor of God, the breastplate of righteousness, I need to be living right. If my people, which are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, it protects your heart. Right? It protects your heart. Oh, Lord God, I need to have my heart protected by living righteous before you. Not saying, well, I'll, I'll take seven of those commandments, Lord. I, that's all. That's the majority. I mean, that's three quarters of them, isn't it? That's close enough. No, not close enough. All or none. There, it's all or none. That's right. It's all or none. It, but it, it, it gives an opening in the, the chink in your armor, right? I'm not living righteous. I've got a chink in my armor, and boy, that arrow will go straight through that armor right into the heart and kill you spiritually. You won't be able to stand. If you're walking through stuff to where you're constantly getting beat to death, check your armor and make sure you're living righteous before the Lord God Almighty. Am I living righteous? Again, that's the first thing we do. Have we done when we stopped the other day and said, Lord, what's going on with all this stuff? What did I do? Did I do something? Did I do something? We pray, Lord, I want to know. And I'm not there just saying, oh, Lord, you know, show me if there's something wrong. No, I'm no, I want to know, man. This is way too important. I need to make sure that if I have done something to bring this on myself, I need to repent from that. It does not matter what someone else has done. Well, they did this to me, and that made me mad, so I did this. No, you negated the whole thing. I need to stand before the Lord with the breastplate of righteousness to protect my heart so I can keep on living. Amen? With our shoes shod with the preparation of the gospel Ooh, of peace. Hallelujah. Walking in peace. Yes. Yes. Walking in peace with Him, number one. Yes. There's nothing between me and my God. And walking in peace with anyone else. Yes. I'm walking around in peace, not walking in, you're doing this and you're doing that and you're doing that. 
That's not at peace with your brother. That's not at peace with anyone. I need to walk in peace. Amen. I need to put the helmet of salvation. The enemy comes and says, you call yourself a Christian and you're doing that, 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 that. No, I'm saved, praise God, because of what he did. And his word tells me I'm saved because I made him my Lord and I'm not living more for my own self. And I can protect my mind like that. I can have that shield of faith. My God said this is going to work and it's going to work, period. There ain't no question about it. I don't care what the world says or what's going on around me. The word of God is still true. Amen? Amen. We're going to stand there. Look at the next verse. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood. We do not wrestle against flesh and blood. I did not wrestle with something in my throat a minute ago. I was wrestling with something that was trying to put something on my voice, my ability to speak the Word of God. I recognize that, and we change that, right? Amen. We do not wrestle against flesh and blood. We're not wrestling against our spouse. <laughs> We're not wrestling against our children. We're not wrestling against our boss. We're not wrestling against our finances or anything else. We're wrestling against the enemy that is constantly trying to kill, steal, and destroy. <laughs> it's an ongoing thing. You can count on it. He's going to be there trying to do it. But if we've got the whole armor of God on, we need to recognize what's going on. We can recognize we're not wrestling against flesh and blood, but against principalities. Principalities, these are guys that sets up over whole areas, right? I know when we lived in, in Denver, I've said it before, there's a, a big one that, that uh, rests over Denver itself. There's a bigger one that rests over Boulder, Colorado. And it's the same with every, every place. And I've said this before, you go into a Chinese restaurant and they've got this nice little house sitting there, all decorated, and they'll usually have some little bread and stuff there on the front door. It's to appease the local spirits. The local evil spirits. They're trying to keep them at peace with them. And they hate to go traveling anywhere because they don't know what other spirits are going to run into over there and at this place and everything else. Isn't that interesting? Yeah, they recognize it. But there are principalities. There are powers against the rulers of the darkness of this age. Rulers of the darkness of this age. There's, man, this is getting so dark, it's hard to see. I was praying over a man's daughter yesterday. And uh, he, he just broke down and started weeping and said, Well, you pray over my daughter. I didn't know the man. I just met him. And I said, sure. And I said, what's going on? She needs to get her life right. Okay, let's pray. And I saw a big shadow over her, a darkness over her. And I came against that darkness. Right? We need to see what's going on. Jesus says, I can do nothing except what I see my Father in heaven doing. I won't see what he's doing, right? But Jesus can see it and he's living in me. Then it sounds like I can see what the Father's doing, right? I want to do that. I need to see what he's doing. But they are ruling the darkness of this age. And boy, like we talked about last week, is there a little bit going on in this world right now? Hurricanes and earthquakes and bombs and, and rumors of wars and wars and everything else that's going on. My goodness. There are many rulers of darkness of this age and against the spiritual host of wickedness in the heavenly places or in the spirit world. In heavenly places. Spirit world. And spiritual hosts of wickedness. There are many. Remember again the guy in the gatherings. What is your name? Legion. For there are many. You know that a legion of soldiers was 7,000 and up. When he said legion, he said one poor guy. And Jesus said, well, get out, go, go on into the pigs. And they left, and all of a sudden, the guy was a perfectly normal guy after that. Before that, no one could even go near the area. They tried to chain him up with chains. They'd break the chains. Seven sons of Sceva that we just talked about. One guy beat up all seven of them, stripped them, and ran them out bleeding from all the stuff they had done. There are hosts. There are lots of them. 
But we have power over every last one of them. Didn't Jesus, Jesus say that a minute ago? I give you power over all the power of the enemy. We can stand. One person. One person can stand. Amen. In Jesus' name, get out of here. Amen. And they have to obey just like they obeyed him. I want to walk in that. I have to walk in that. Talking about walking in it. 2 Corinthians 10, 3 says, For though we walk in the flesh, I'm, I'm living in a flesh body right now. Praise God, I hope he comes back and sets us pretty soon from this body. But while we're in it, we're still walking in this fleshly body. We do not war according to the flesh. I don't do this under my own power. I can't do it under my own power. I tried to get myself set free from the demon that was uh, that was harassing me. Couldn't do it. Couldn't do it. Stood with everything I had. I mean, I stood strong. He flicked me out of the way like a flea. But guess what? Jesus says, I cast out demons by the finger of God. Just like, oh, let me get that out of the way. <laughs> God Almighty has got so much more power than Satan never dreamed of having. But we do not war according to the flesh by our own power and by our own authority. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, not physical, not by own, our own mights, or our own minds, but mighty in God for pulling down strongholds. Man, have you got a stronghold over your life? A lot of people have a stronghold of addiction to cigarettes or a stronghold of addiction to uh, alcohol or drugs or, or a stronghold of addiction to a foul language coming out of your mouth. Mm -hmm. Many people, I'll tell you what, I've met, met many, many people. I can't never forget one time where a brother, when we were here back in the 70s, a brother that I looked up to, we went over to his house one day to, to share a meal and all of a sudden, he said a word that I went, what? Well, uh, when are we allowed to say that? You know, I didn't know we had that freedom to say something like that. I didn't accept it, but I knew something was wrong immediately uh, when this brother thought he had no liberty to go out and, and say some foul thing out of his mouth. But see, there are strongholds in our lives. There are strongholds in our family sometimes. Where we recognize and say, hey, there's a spirit, a spirit of division in my house. A spirit of division in my house. There will be spirits of divisions that try and set up in churches. Have we ever seen that around here, Brother Bill? Oh, yeah. oh, you've seen that before around here. Yeah. Oh, yes. Like uh, constantly. <laughs> you know? And you have to take the authority and say, in Jesus' name, I bind that garbage. You get out of here. You have no right to touch my family. You have no right to touch my wife or my relationship with my boss. There are principalities and powers. There are strongholds that sets up in our life. And we have to recognize that. And we have the authority. If we don't take it, we automatically lose by default. That's right. right? Mm -hmm. If someone's punching you in the face and you don't do anything about it, well, I guess I'll just sit here and take it. You know, Lord, help me. Well, I sent a plane and a helicopter and an army duck and all that other stuff, right? We've all heard that one. Well, get up and do something. He's given us the authority right. over all the power of the enemy. That's right. He's given it to us. If we're not recognized and engaged in the warfare, he's the only one doing the warfare. That's true. We're just being a punching bag. Far too often it happens where I see people who are just being punching bags. It's like, put on the gloves, dude. Get in there. Because he's going to keep punching until he drops you. I don't like that. I'm not going to go for that. <clears throat> but we can pull down the strongholds. The enemy didn't like that part either. <clears throat> we can pull down those strongholds. If you've got a stronghold in your family to where one of them is giving you grief, I tear this down, not against the person, but against the enemy. We're not fighting against flesh and blood. That's right. And we read that a minute ago? Amen. I'm not fighting against that kid. I'm not fighting against my wife or my husband or my parents or whoever else. 
I, we're fighting against the enemy. Amen. Let's recognize who we're fighting. Come on. And in Jesus' name, I come against you. I bind your hands and feet. Jesus says, what you bind on earth shall be bound in the spirit world. Yes. In heaven. What you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven, in the spirit world. I bind you in Jesus' name. I command you to loose and take these things off. What I loose on him? What I loose on earth? Get out of here in Jesus' name. You take your hands off of my relationship with my kid. You take your hands off my relationship with my boss. You take your hands off of my finances. Right? Whatever it is. The enemy doesn't play fair. He does not play fair at all. You take your hands off of that in Jesus' name. I'm not fighting that granddaughter. I'm not fighting my own kids. I'm not fighting any of this stuff. I'm fighting the enemy. Amen? Amen. Amen. And we can pull them down. I tear down your stronghold. You set up these things to try and beat me to death. And if I don't recognize it, I don't do anything about it. I don't like living that way. Been there and done that. It sucked the first time, and it's going to suck again if I don't do something about it. I'm going to stand there and say, in Jesus' holy name, I stand by His authority, by His power. Amen. I stand in Him right. and Him alone because I'm washed in His blood. Hallelujah. Many times, if we're going to go to some strong warfare, I, we go before us first and say, Lord God, wash me and cleanse me. Forgive me because I know I've got no right on my own to stand here. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. 1 John 1, 9. Cleanses us. Wash me and cleanse me, Lord. I don't want anything, any spot or blemish on my robes of righteousness that you've given me to give the enemy any, any right to accuse me before you. But Lord, wash me and cleanse me. Let me stand strong here. And then I can go against the enemy that's coming against my family. Come against my finances. Come against anything else. I can say in Jesus' name, I tear down this stronghold. You will not live in my house. Yes. Right. Um, this, this has come to my mind several times. What you've been telling me. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that we do is we will mix some, something that God has given us or prospered us in came mm -hmm. got all the time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And um, yeah. I'll repeat it here in a second. Okay. Yeah. What she said, if you couldn't hear, she said a lot of times if, if all of a sudden something happens that costs us money, and this we got to we learned this many years ago when we got a hold of the, what the word of God says about our finances. If something has happened that's caused us money, have I missed giving God his tithe? Have I stolen from him? If I'm stuck stealing from him, what's it say in Malachi 3? You're under a curse because you're stealing from God. Not rocket science, right? If I'm stealing from anyone, I'm going to be under a curse. Amen? A thief is not blessed. Period. Just the way it is. Not blessed. A thief is not going to be blessed. But if I'm stealing from God, uh, duh, you think I'm going to be hurt? Yeah. And it's going to cost me in my pocketbook. He'll try and get our attention. First thing we did uh, when we stopped, stopped just the other day and said, Lord, why did our refrigerator go out? What's going on? This is going on. That's going on. Have I missed anything? And if I miss it, I go and give that money back. It's not my money to begin with. Right? And then I can give some of mine. I don't care if it's a dollar over and above. It should be more than that, but if that's all you can afford, that's okay. He understands. But then I want to give, and it shall be given to you. Uh, good measure, pressed down, shaken together, shall men give unto your bosom. I'm going to do what the Word says. But we need to examine him ourselves. Let a man examine himself. Seems like I read that somewhere. Let a man examine himself. I want to know, have I done something? If I've done something, Lord, show me. Because this ain't worth getting beat up. I don't like getting beat up, right? I don't like living a defeated lifestyle. I want to walk in Him and walk in His authority and in His power. We can tear down the strongholds that are in our lives. And our families and everything else. 
our God loves us and he has given us authority over all the power of the enemy. What a joy. That's, that's comforting. That's comforting to know that he's a mighty God and we serve him. And if we come and say, Lord, I recognize I got no right to come before holy God. But Lord God, you wash me and cleanse me if my people which are called by my name. If humble themselves, pray, see God's face.